got tons of these maquettes or figure studies, um, and they kind of sit around and um, haunt me all day. But they're also nice because I, if I do have a, um, an epiphany of, of a shape or a specific pose or something, I've already got a little malleable man or woman, and I can just kind of, you know. So these started out as, as that. They were studies of, um, you know, somebody I had sitting around. I just started bending them around, and they actually evolved separately over the course of like a month and a half. Um, and as as you can see, this one's tweaked since then. Um, yeah. Um, and it's still evolving. Who knows where to go, but but I didn't have anything specifically I wanted to say about this. It was more about, um, as you had said, um, something pretty to look at. Mm -hmm. And I think that, that that's a very valid um, emotion to pull out as well. You know, um, it is nice to not always be overburdened with thinking deeply about something. Sometimes it's just nice to say, man, that's kind of interesting or cool or whatever. Um, so with these, I mean, I'm just a lover of anatomy. So it was like I just wanted, you know, it started with, you know, I wanted to do something kind of dynamic and, and stretchy and physically impossible. Um, and so they, you know, they started here. I started them larger. And then I'm kind of like, man, they're, they're like the same but different, you know. It's a male-female. They're similar. Um, so yeah, I mean, we're, we're, you know, and then it's evolved into the thought process of yin and yang and complementary male, female, um, you know, and there's loads of places your mind can go with that theme. <laughs> well, there's not, you don't do real details in like the detailed face. Is that because of the way you're doing it going into bronze or the casting? It's harder to keep the detail across all that molding? No, I mean, you can, I, you know, I think, and I had an artist friend that was in recently and he's like, you know what? You, you like cut the face off of everything in this room, you know, everything's face is cut off um, or obscured and right. hidden. And I think, you know, and, and he's actually the first one that, you know, even this one, which there's no reason to cut it, but I still just lopped a little piece and, you know, I'm still waiting for that evolution. I don't know what that is. Um, I think, you know, it has to do with abstracting, um, abstracting the form down to essence as opposed to race or pretty or not pretty. I mean, they're pretty in the, in the fact that they're, you know, muscular and kind of Greco, you know, perfect sort of a looking body. But, you know, when you get into faces, I think you can, as a human, when you're talking to someone, you look them in the face and you're just, you're always drawn to the face. And I, I guess I didn't want it to be about the face because a face You know, and that's actually, now that I'm talking about it, maybe that's it. Um, I think you stop thinking at the face. Um, you, or you're getting all the expression from the yeah, face. Yeah, you're reading the face, and, and I, you know, I, I don't want you to read the face. I want it to be more about everything else, and, and not so much the, the speaking mind, but it's, it's the thing inside. So maybe, maybe cutting the face off is, is trying to shut it up, you know, in, in where you live, you know, and everybody wants to talk all, you know, it's like, you can just be quiet and hang out, you know. Um, yeah, that, that's got to be it. Cool. Maybe we could talk about scale a little bit. I mean, this is, you know, there's kind of a variety of scale in, in here in your studio. Uh, do, you, do you do all si different sizes, or is this one on the large side? Yeah, I mean, this is, you know, one of the larger sizes. And again, I mean, I think sculpture parks in general are appealing to me. Um, you know, I'm a huge nature lover, and that's why I live here. And, um, you know, I, 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 when we were forming the sculpture park over in Cashers, you know, that's kind of the thing is I love, you know, I think humankind were really bad at living copacetically with nature. Um, you know, we're just like, take it all and kill it all and change it and do whatever, um, you know, beyond sculpture. But I think sculpture parks kind of um, are a nice place that it works. And, and, and you know, um, I think that's why I love them so much. I'm a nature lover. I love the accomplishments of, of humanity in general and the things that, we're, that we can do. Um, and when you get into the art realm, I think, you know, 
art is a great human gift, um, you know, on a creation level, which is a whole other. Um, and so, you know, like these pieces, um, yeah, they get larger. Um, when you get outside, you, you know, nature dwarfs everything. And so if you're not large, it's, um, <clears throat> it gets lost and dwarfed. This is what's inside. Even, even the really small maquettes have a small version of an armature. But it's an armature, and this is really for a, a, you know, a bust. You know, so this is the head, this is the neck, this is the, you know, maybe the here or something. So if you envision this inside me, and all my skin and flesh is clay, um, you know, and then you can move this around. So if you want to, you know, stretch their head back or lean them forward or whatever. And so it's a poseable armature that supports the clay um, and keeps it from sagging because clay, I mean, it's essentially water and mud, you know, water and dirt or oil and dirt. Um, so even on like this scale, you have to have one of these in it. You can't, you know, but it's a more complex, it's, it's an actual skeleton made of metal that you can pose and bend the arms around. Um, when you get into this size, it, you can't really make it poseable. It's too, it's too big. Once you're scaling up, it, it becomes a little bit of a math problem. And so there's different ways you can approach it. And like I mentioned earlier, there's like, you can do the old school. It's, it's a, a frame that creates a box around it. And it's all about plumb lines and measuring distances. And, and you come up with these points all over it that gets you roughly there. And then you kind of sculpt that. And that's like old school, 400 year old enlarging techniques. Um, now you can, you know, you can have it cyber scanned, which I've actually done, and they come in and they scan it and they build a computer model and then they mill that out of foam for you. Um, and you can cover that foam in clay and sculpt it that way, um, but it's pretty expensive. Um, and you kind of get locked into that. I've kind of, you know, started scaling up my own things with um, cross sections. So I'll cast a foam one, um, which this is just rigid foam. Um, so I'll cast, I'll sculpt it in this size, make a mold, cast one of these, um, build a miter box that'll cut it into even slices at a 90 degree. So then you get all these little segments like this. And then you take these, um, you take these pieces and like this one's number 12. Um, I'll put these on an opaque projector, project them on the wall, trace the shape based on the, you know, I'll, I'll usually choose a piece that I know the girth I want. So like this piece is, you know, the top of right here. So I'll know I want this to be three feet. So I'll project this shape onto the wall, get it at three feet, lock the projector down, and then go through and, and you know, consequently trace every shape and, and make a pattern essentially. Um, and then I'll take styrofoam, cut that into all these contours at six inches. This specifically was six inch styrofoam, so this equaled it six inches, and that was the scale. I like water-based clay because it's more um, direct transference of, of the process, and I'm, I'm really interested in, like, like I'm not I'm not that interested in, in minute detail and really tight, refined um, things. I want, when I'm done, and when you're looking at this piece, I want you to say, man, there's a fingerprint or a fingernail or there's a tool mark. And, and so I want the sculpture to be about um, the act of sculpting, which is, for me, is what it's all about. Um, so with, with my work, it is much more gestural and kind of brush strokey, you know, te you know tool mark, um, and, and water-based clay moves really fast because it's really soft, you don't have to heat it up, it's just like you pull it out of the bag and you can, you know, work it really fast and you can leave it really raw and, and, and again, it becomes about emotional intensity. If you work it and work it and work it and work it, you tend to lose that.